palette I'm going to be using. I have white. Yeah, just yeah. I can see the yellow, black, and then this is called phthalo green. I got turquoisey green. Turquoisey, okay. But honestly, any green would be okay because it's just for your background. Well, we're gonna. <laughs> We're gonna have to mix a really light green for this upper part and then a slightly dark. Any brush is okay for mixing. So, you can start with either one, but um, I'm just gonna go ahead and start with the darker one on the bottom. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm gonna take a pretty big scoop of the green. Okay. Pop it on a surface to mix on. Okay, perfect. And I'm also going to take some yellow. So some green and yellow. Okay. And you're just going to start to mix that together. You want to try to keep it in a pile. So try not to spread it all over your mixing surface. Try to keep it in a blob. Your, your darker one that you'll have kind of more on the bottom part of your painting. If okay. you don't think you have enough, just make a little extra. Yeah. Definitely. Better to have more than not enough. All right, then uh, you can rinse your brush. It doesn't have to be like crazy clean, but just give it a quick rinse. Dry it off. And then you're going to want to make a lighter green. So to do that, you're gonna to wanna to start with a lot of yellow. Pretty nice big scoop of yellow. And I'm just going in a new spot. Now you could take from your green, like your regular green, but you could also just take a little bit of this, just kind of tap the brush and start mixing that around in the yellow. So we're kind of going to get like a really limey, light yellowy green. Also going to add some white to this. So you can mix it together first if you want. And then you can take a little bit of white to kind of get it a little more opaque. And um, these colors are not really specific because they're just background. So you guys can kind of make them how you like them. The white will just help it lay on the canvas a little nicer. I'm gonna take maybe like, maybe like that much white, just like a corner. Um, so get get your colors where you want them. Make sure you have big enough piles. Um, I'm gonna use a brush kind of like this. It's like rounded, but any brush is fine because you're just gonna kind of be slapping paint all over. Okay. <laughs> but that's just what I'm using. I'm gonna start with my light one. So okay. if you brush you were mixing with, that's okay. And I'm going to start on the top and basically just kind of flip-flop my brush like this all over. Nice. So the more you go, the more cool little texture you're going to get. So okay. you can do the idea is just to keep them kind of tiny little brush marks all over the place to get that cool almost woodsy looking texture. Okay. So you're going to fill the top half of the canvas pretty uh, pretty low with this light green, maybe like half. Okay. So you can full part. And when we get closer to the halfway point, we'll start adding the darker green onto our brush and kind of start blurring them together. Hmm. And then all the way down with the darker color. And if you want to bring the color around the edges of your canvas, if you have a back staple canvas like me, you can paint the edges. Otherwise, just go for it. I'm kind of lazy, so I'm probably not going to do that.
the cool thing is we get people that have never painted before all the time at Muse. Yeah. And they're always, they're always kind of nervous, but there's nothing to be nervous about because, you know, we're honestly really excited that you're trying, That's that you, you're just coming and, and doing it because I just, I say that painting is basically messing up until it looks right. <laughs> you know what it's going to look like in the end until you just start making marks on the canvas. You know, you just have to do it. <laughs> What I'm doing right now yeah. is laying some more of this light green like on the kind of very bottom area here just because I want this like bottom part to be nice and wet. Oh, okay, okay. Because acrylic paints like to dry fast, so I'm just trying to make sure this is saturated pretty wet. Then I'm just going to take this dirty brush, you don't even have to clean it off, okay. and tap it into the darker green we mixed. And you can start laying it underneath. And then you can also start kind of doing the same brush marks and start layering it up into the wet paint. Okay. And start to blend and kind of grab and make other greens. And if you if you accidentally like go too high up and it's just like green, dark green and it's not blending, you can wipe your paintbrush off and take some more of your light green again and just use it as a mixing tool and just kind of mix those colors together okay and another thing is like if something's just not blending the way you want and you just keep trying to go up and up and up and it's just becoming too dark just leave it alone for a little while because yeah. if it dries you can paint over it and it'll be easy to reestablish. Okay. so then just keep going down with darker and darker colors you can kind of mix the dark and the light together if you want as you go down. And then the bottom will be really, really dark. So you can just use the dark by itself. And again, this is the background. So you can kind of just have fun with it. You can be a little sloppy. There's not really a rhyme or reason. <laughs> Yeah, the cool thing, if anything, if anything weird is happening, you can literally just take the colors straight from your plate here and just start slapping them on the canvas. You don't necessarily have to mix it on the plate. Yeah. The beauty of color theory. I leave mine like this. And, you know, it, it could, if I was really particular, I could have blended more here and there, but I'm keeping in mind that it's the background. Lots is going to go. Yeah. The butterfly is the centerpiece, you know. But if you want to, if you have a hair dryer or anything around, you could blow dry it to speed it up. But we'll just want this to be drier for when we start doing the flower shapes and the butterfly shape. Next thing, you're going to want kind of a pointy brush like this. And what I like to do to just help with like the drawing, we're going to use white. I like to cover the paintbrush all over. I'm trying uh -huh. to make this not glare. Ah! The metal okay. part. And then I like to twist it like this to help keep the brush kind of pointy. So just kind of twist it on the plate. Pointy. Um, and that way you can draw with it a little easier. So you can either draw out shapes like with a line or you can just do like a full paintbrush stroke and I'll show you both ways. So the first thing I'm going to make is the flower down the bottom. And I'm just going to make one petal kind of pointing up this way. So you can decide maybe this is like where the center of your flower will be or something. Yeah. Simple like that. Then. You can either just take a lot of paint on your brush and press pretty hard and just pull that in to the middle. Kind of gives you like a full shape. You might need to like thicken it up a little if you want. So you want this flower to be a little big. But that's one way you can do a petal. Or you can take your time and like draw out the shape instead. 
if you want to be a little more precise and then fill it in. Okay. Either way is fine. And to get the like perspective, so that the side petals will kind of go out that way. Um, and then the ones that are kind of hanging down here, since they're kind of coming at us more, they'll be a little shorter, but they'll be kind of fatter on the ends. So it'll be something like that, a little bit more of like a teardrop. Just kind of helps create somewhat of a perspective. And even this way, it would still be kind of like a teardrop, but maybe like a little bit warped. You know? Uh, specific about how many petals I put on these flowers. <laughs> like, I don't know if they're six or 80, but <laughs> I just kind of kept filling it. I just kind of kept filling it until it looked right. And you can let them get pretty close together in the middle. Because we'll add the yellow part in the middle later to show that. And I wouldn't even worry about like the top petals too much because your butterfly is going to kind of be sitting there. So it will probably kind of cover that area. And you can put flowers in other spots too. Like you can go over here and you could do, say this is the middle. And just start building petals onto that. And sometimes white is kind of translucent. So if you want to, you can put another coat on it in a little bit, but you'll want it to dry. That makes sense. Let's let it dry for a minute and then it'll be easier to put that second coat on. On this example here, I do have some shading on the petals. It's kind of optional. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. But right. all it would be is um, just a very, very light gray. So I have white on my brush, and I would just take a tiny touch of black, just a bit, and just mix it around into some white to make a very light gray. And, you know, if you need to, you can make it darker, but okay. then you can take that and just kind of lay it on one side of each of your petals, usually the bottom side, and just kind of like drag it right along. And if you want, you can kind of blur it into the white on your petal. So it's okay if your petals are wet, it will kind of help. But again, that's definitely optional. You don't have to do it. Still look pretty without it. This bottom one, maybe. You could kind of play with both sides if you want, since it's like in the center. Uh, do the same pointy brush again. And I'm going to take a bunch of white. Right. 
and I'm going to start kind of in the flower so it might kind of blend with the flower a little bit but the first wing actually I'm going to start with the center wing that kind of goes up so it's going to kind of come this will be like our point it's our starting point here yeah like a little angled line and we're going to go up and now you can make it as big as you want you can take up a lot of the space so you want to go pretty far back maybe like that close to your corner right okay so bring this up and we're going to kind of point it this way not point but like a rounded point because that's the top of the wing but don't even worry about the shape being perfect just yet because when we do all the black like outlines later you can use those to kind of really perfect things so again it's all just kind of jumping off points okay so that's going to curve down there now it's going to be like a really wonky looking heart. So this point is going to kind of curve this way. Yep. And then you want to do like a pretty drastic curve in right there. And then you're going to connect these together. Definitely a heart, just kind of like a weird shape. <laughs> and then the wing that's kind of next to it, sort of behind, you would just kind of come right next to this, sort of parallel, but go out a little farther, and then curve this guy back in. Create that other wing that's behind it. And then for the lower wing, you're going to come from this jumping off point here, curve down, you might go through your flower, that's okay. We're coming out you can go maybe like a little farther back than this point and then start to curve it up and if you need to you can come up here and continue this back and then just curve it down to meet that and that'll give you that nice butterfly shape nice. and you know you can take that easy you don't have to rush it you know if you need to kind of if you feel like you want to start small like if you do yours like this and it's like maybe really tiny because okay, you're just going to paint this all in white anyway. So if you have to, you can just do it all. that's awesome. So once you get the shape that you like, you're just going to fill all of it in with white. So we need a nice layer of white in order to put that nice orangey stuff on it. I'm just doing some white with some yellow mixed together. I'm just using the same pointy brush. Mixing some white and yellow. And I'm just going to take this and I'm not even going to like draw a circle. I'm going to just kind of tap. So I'm going to go in the middle of the flower. And I'm going to kind of just tap the brush like this. Tap, tap, tap. It gives you some nice texture for like the middle yeah. of the. Uh, so many different ways to get cool texture. Yeah, a little bit more forgiving than like trying to brush stroke everything. These cool little marks, and you can leave them just yellow if you want. But if you want a little more fun and pizzazz, you can take a tiny bit of red on your brush, and I, I mean, before you even go into the canvas, you can take. Just the tiniest bit of red on the tip of your brush and just tap that around to get yeah. kind of orangey color. The bottom part of the flowers, just tap it to 
kind of create this cool little color change. Just gives you a little bit more of a pop. And if you want even more, you can do a little bit of white on the upper part of the flower center. That's cool. Sometimes people are like, is that enough? Is that enough? And I'll be like, well, it's, it's hard to tell you if it's enough or not. You just kind of have to look at it and think about balance. You know, on one flower, maybe you want to add some more on another one just to balance it out. Yeah. All right, I'm going to start mixing the oranges for the butterfly. A scoop of yellow. I'm going to go on this plate here. Maybe a little extra. Mm -hmm. um, so this giant pile of yellow. I'm going to take a tiny touch of red because red's really powerful. Yeah. Turn that around. Oh man, even even just that was really strong. But I'm going to also add some white to this because I want it to be kind of opaque. So like that much white. Kind of like a cheddar cheese orange. Actually, that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to try to get it in a pile all the way on the edge of my plate here so it doesn't dry out. There we go. Yeah. So that's going to be my lighter orange. Actually, I'm just going to make sure I have a good amount of it because my butterfly is much bigger than the smaller one. <laughs> okay. That should be good for the lighter one. I'm going to do just a slightly darker orange. So that means I'm going to do yellow and then a little more red. And you probably don't have to add any white to this because you just can leave it dark. Cool. Duh. Uh, this brush is kind of small. I'm going to switch to a slightly bigger brush, a big area. But whatever brush you're comfortable with. This is just a little bit bigger than that one I was using, but it's still on point. So I'm going to cover most of the wings with the yellowy orange first. Okay. And it's going to be sort of a quick process because you don't want to wait too long before right. you go to the darker one because you want to blend them. So I'm just going to do one wing at a time. So I'm covering my brush all over with that lightish orange color. And I am going to start... Uh, well, we're going to be able to put the black lines between, so even if it's a little rough, that's okay. But I'll start over on this side. So you want to imagine where that split is between the two wings and just kind of get that in there. To fill in far over to the side, smooth out these marks. Try to do long brush marks like this. Because okay. if you stop and start like this, you'll get all these little weird marks that you probably won't want. You want to do long marks. Don't pick up your brush. Just go all the way down. Keep working. Ah, my plate almost fell. Mm -hmm. Keep working your way over. The softer the brush, the better. This one's a little rough, but... Okay, so once you get pretty close to the edge there, that's when you're going to want to pick up some of the darker color. You don't have to clean off your brush. Just make sure you have a good chunk of it. And then lay it on the edge here. But don't be afraid to start blurring it in to the color you've already done. Okay. And actually, you could probably go a little darker even. So I might add a little extra red to my... Because what's happening is it's blending with the orange we already have on there. So doing a little extra red won't be bad. So just keep blurring it over into that light yellow until you get like a gradient. But I'm going to do it again on each wing. 
that brush was a little stiff, so I think I'm going to try a different one again. <laughs> the softer the brush for something like this, the better. That one's kind of rough, too. All right. So if you don't have a soft, pointy brush, this brush is usually pretty soft for me. That rounded one I used in the background, just rinsed off the green. So this is okay to use because you're the sides of the butterfly's wings are pretty rounded. Soft blend. But it's going to be the same thing. So I'm going to take this lightish yellow orange color, cover my brush. And remember, the lighter orange is on the bottom and the darker orange is on the top. So again, I'm going to start on the bottom. I'm going to layer, layer it up. Get those long marks in there. I'm not going to worry too much about the very edges. That's where we can put the black. All right, so I've I blended that light orange all the way up. Now I'm going to take that darker orange on my already dirty brush and lay it on this very upper part right along the edge of that. Try to do these long marks. Even if you have to go like up and down, just still. And it looks even cooler when you start adding like the black masking details and stuff. So don't be afraid to kind of bring it in a little further than you think because you don't want to hide it too much when you do do the you might cover up the cool red stuff you did. So don't be afraid to bring it in a little further than you feel comfortable. Ta-da! Okay. Starting with my light orange. Going to do the bottom wing. This is where you'll be able to separate it from the flower even more. Just try to go with the shape of your wing. You know, you can curl that paintbrush. Take your dark color, go right on the top here. Keep blurring it in. All right. So once you feel good about that part, you're going to want to let it dry again. Okay, this is going to be kind of like the second to last okay. detail. And then the last thing is the white dots. But no the black detail will take a little while. Okay. So no rush. But um, for the black, you're going to want an even tinier round brush. So okay. it's really pointy, soft, as soft as you have. I'm going to cover it all over with black. And then I'm going to roll it kind of flat. So to just lay it flat on the plate and twist to get a nice point still. Um, and I would say the first thing you can do is just go around your wings. Don't worry about the middle part. And so that would be, you know, coming from your middle point here. Because you can make them a little thicker on some parts. So here I'll just start. Mm. So it's usually best to do one full long line without stopping because that will give you the nicest, like crispiest line. Yeah. So, and if you can hold your brush a little closer to the like metal part of your brush. Okay. Um, if you have to, you can rest your pinky on your canvas if it's dry, whatever helps. But I like to kind of just do one fell swoop. Even if you lose paint, 
because that's still going to be a nicer kind of crisper line. And even if you have to go over it again, still try to do one long line. So that one can stay kind of skinny, but once you get up here, this is where you can kind of like have a little more fun with it. You can kind of like, if you want, you can come off the wing and kind of really point that top part a little more and make that a little thicker. If you have like particularly thick paint, if you can, you can water it down a little. You can put like a little bit of water in a small pile of black paint and it will help kind of flow a little nicer for you. And that's especially nice for like when you're trying to get a crisp edge like over here. So keep that in mind if that would help at all. Um, I'm making the back part of the bottom wing a little thicker with the black. It's a nice thick, kind of like a big booty. Blop. And then lastly, I'm just going to outline this one too. Long marks, and I'm making this upper wing a little thicker as well. Okay. Like that. Got the basics of our butterfly. So I get into like the inside of the wings, just kind of want to get the body out of the way. Yeah. Which is, I mean, you can really make it any kind of little nugget kind of shape you want <laughs> but <laughs> this is gonna come kind of out from the wing here and you can make like a little head shape and then it honestly just kind of you can wiggle it a little bit but then it just goes right back into the body and you just keep making it part of the wings just fill it in and if you want to add another white petal there after you can but it's not super necessary and as for the like antenna and the legs, just press as lightly as you can and just kind of do like little hockey puck kind of, or not hockey puck, hockey, hockey stick connected together. Boop. You can also like pull up a picture of a butterfly if you'd rather and kind of copy that shape. That's basically what I did though. Then the antenna are just really, really light. So you want to press as lightly as you can, or brush, that's okay. And then just do like a little dot on the ends. Doop. Like that. That's so cool. And I mean, you can make them more fun than that if you want. You can like make it go up and then down or whatever, but. <laughs> um, I'm going to start doing this wing over here. Um, so a lot of the parts of these wings are like really elongated teardrop shapes. So what you want to do is you can start from the bottom if you want or the top. It doesn't matter. But you're kind of going to come from the top part if you start at the top and make a really long teardrop shape going down like that. Try to keep the lines pretty thin if you can. Try. Yeah. Um, this is the tricky part up here. When you make the next one, you want to come from this line and come up and like go as high as you feel comfortable and then come down. So the line, the next line you do is always gonna come from the previous teardrop thing and then you would just fill in this open space. It starts to create that cool pattern. And then you have one more. So this one might be a little weird, you might have to kinda 
round it out and then make sure it rounds out with the edge of your butterfly there. Yeah. And if you want to, you can like, this, this one on the end is kind of thick, so if you want, you can kind of adjust that just by bringing in the thickness of the wing on this side. But that'll give you that pattern on that edge. In the, in the middle wing here, you can kind of start along, use the edge of the wing to help you. And you want to make a pretty large teardrop shape in the middle here, kind of going with the curve of the wing. Yes. And we've got kind of a mini one in between there. It's going to go, it's going to come from here and come out a little ways. But it's not going to go all the way to the bottom. It's going to kind of go back in toward this teardrop guy. My lines are getting a little thick. That's just because I'm painting sideways here. Um, and then you have two more. So you would come from this line, bring it out, bring it down, try to kind of be parallel there down to the bottom. Boink. And then you should have just enough room for one more. And if it fits right with the bottom there, you can just use that bottom edge or you can like draw in a new line if you need to. All right, so from there, before we fill in the rest of it black, there are two little teardrop shapes up here for like a little extra zhuzh. Yeah, these guys. Not every monarch has them, but you can toss them in there if you want. So you have those marks, and then everything here will be black. So you just fill in the rest. Nice. All right, we have one more part, and this bottom wing is kind of got a little more going on. They're not like just rounded teardrop things. The main one in the middle is kind of like, kind of like the shape of this big wing we did before. But before we do that, let's do what we know. So I'm gonna come from this point here, and then I'm gonna bring a teardrop shape kind of coming down round it out at the back here and just bleed it right back into your wing shape. Oh, wow. What you do is going to come from that point and kind of come out, but you're not going to go all the way to the end. You're going to stop a little short and then create that kind of wonky shape and just round it back into this part. Oh, but definitely take that process a little slower. Um, and if you want to, if you have like a clean paper towel handy, um, get it wet. That way you can kind of have it with you if you make any kind of mistakes. Yeah. If you're quick, you can use the wet paper towel to wipe it. Oh, okay. Come off, because if this is dry, it's not going to bother it. Go, like, all the way up here. That's okay, because we're going to kind of create more little pieces in there anyway. Okay. Um, and then you can do kind of a skinny, rounded guy here and just fill in this little black spot. And you can either leave that spot open on the top or you can fill it in black, whatever you want. On my example, I kind of left it open. It's a little smaller though. Yeah. So, I mean, you could even just like trim it down if you want. So those are the three bigger ones. And then you're gonna have some smaller pieces, but instead of teardrops, these are just going to stop right into the weird wonky shape. It's not going to come to a point. And then we've got another one here. It rounds out, and then it's going to go right into this wonky shape. And then one more. However you can fit it in here, it goes right in. And then you can fill in any open space on the ends here.
So that's, you could totally leave it like that if you want. You could come to these little points that do hit the wonky shape and kind of round those out. Oh, okay. Cool rounded pattern. Yeah. Like they're little ovals. Some butterfly wings look like that. Some are just straight. So you can kind of play with it how you want. Um, but that is basically how those lines in there go. Then from there, if you need to, like, tweak anything, you can. If you want to go back up in here and, like, sharpen any lines or anything, you can. Um, and then you just want this to dry. And then the last thing would be the white dots, which are pretty fun because you can kind of just have fun with those. It's pretty dry. Um, and I would say... That small paintbrush, again, would probably be great for the dots. Um, you can use the brush if you want and just cover it pretty generously. And you can make white dots pretty easily. The handle end of your paintbrush and just dunk it in the paint. And you can just stamp it on there and that'll make nice dots too. So either way works. Sometimes I like the brush end because I don't have to stop and dunk it as many times. That kind of helps you see that this wing is in front of that wing as well by putting the dots down this a little. And that's kind of it. From there, you can kind of just keep playing and tweaking. You can add that other. You could even just fill this in white right here if you're worried about that weird open space. That is amazing.